Hello and welcome to this week's video homework. In this video, I'm going to continue talking about macromolecules and what role they play in our lives. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the energy for life, trying to answer the questions, where do we get energy and what do we use that energy for? In this unit, our objective is for each of you to be able to construct and revise an explanation for how hydrogen carbon and oxygen from sugar molecules may combine with other elements to form macromolecules. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how you might construct and revise such an explanation. So again, if I were to ask those questions, where do we get energy and what do we use energy for? A very basic answer might read something like this. Animals, like humans, get energy from our food and we use it to help our bodies grow and move. If I were to grade that as your teacher, I would give that a developing proficiency. Reasons for that is the explanation is pretty limited, mostly just to very obvious, easily observable events. And while you do talk about food and the, the energy in it, you're talking only a tiny bit about matter uh, and the, you don't really map out where the energy goes, how the energy is transferred from one location to another. So how could we revise it? How could we make it better? This week we looked at a few of these evidence statements on these posters, and we can use that information to start to improve on our answers. One poster read, all organisms take in matter. That includes plants and animals and bacteria, all organisms. Another concept here is that sugar is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and lastly, Another statement is that macromolecules are mostly made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. If you were going to put these evidence statements together, you might get a slightly better explanation. All organisms take in matter, such as the atoms carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These atoms can form sugar. Once eaten, the molecules of sugar can provide the same atoms for building up macromolecules. This answer would get you a close to proficient because your explanation starts to go into a little bit more detail. You're starting to explain individual parts of what's going on, the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it also shows how that matter can cycle from sugar into macromolecules. And it also shows that those atoms aren't destroyed or created they just transfer from one place to another. But this answer starts to leave out a little bit of the discussion of energy. So let's again try to make it even better. Let's look at two more evidence statements. This poster reads, chemical reactions can rearrange molecules and make them more complex. Another statement, chemical reactions can capture energy to make molecules and release energy when breaking down molecules. So considering that information, we might be able to construct an even better explanation. All organisms consume matter. For example, plants take in matter and energy to form sugar molecules. These sugar molecules have the same atoms as most other macromolecules, and various chemical reactions can reorganize sugar into more complex macromolecules. Energy is absorbed when these molecules are made. That's starting to get better. This is a pretty good explanation. However, it would probably only get you a proficient in my class. The good parts of this answer are that you're able to focus in on the unobservable parts of this phenomena of sugar becoming macromolecules. You're focusing on the atoms. Also, we were able to revise it based on new evidence which is good. And more specifically, we're starting to get into this idea of energy going into and out of each of these reactions. The energy is, be go is going into the process to make the sugar, and then energy is coming out of sugar and going into other molecules when they are being made. You're showing this flow of energy while matter is changing forms. This is a much better explanation. But I wonder if we can make it even better. The last post that we haven't looked at says, sugar molecules are the fuel for life. When sugar is broken down, energy is released. This ties to a fundamental law of nature that says energy 
cannot be created from nothing. So where does this energy come from? Where do we get energy that's in this sugar? As we've been discussing before, photosynthesis captures sunlight energy, and that energy is stored in a molecule of sugar. And then when that sugar is broken down, that energy can be released. So that makes me start to wonder, how much energy is actually in sugar? If you took a single gram of sugar, that gram contains just about four calories, which isn't a ton, but a gram is a very small amount. Go ahead, take a look at any of your nutritional facts on any of the food that you have around you. Take a look, and if you can find the number of calories and the total number of sugars or carbohydrates, sugars and carbohydrates have the same four calories per gram, and you can probably figure out how much of the ca total calories comes from sugar. In this case, there are 27 grams of sugar in this energy drink. 27 times four would be about 100. Well, it'd be a little bit more than 100, it'd be like 108. So it's close. 27 times four is about 100. That's where the 100 calories comes from in this energy drink. Humans, we use about 24 to 191 calories every hour, depending on how active we are. If a human were to be sleeping for 24 hours straight, they would require 550 calories just to stay alive. That's like less than a single fast food meal for an entire day if you are sleeping all day long. However, if you are very active, you're using close to 191 calories per hour, you would require 4,000 calories each day. On average, humans usually take in about 2,000. That's why we say, if you can see way down here, percent daily values are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. If you're really active, you might use up to 4,000 calories each day. How much sugar would that be? With a little bit of math, you can figure that out. 4,000 calories divided by four calories per gram, that equals 1,000 grams of sugar. If you were a very active person, you would require the equivalent of 2.2 pounds of sugar to keep your body active every day. So what does your body do if you have extra energy? Well, you use it to build up the molecules of your body. You use it to build the proteins and the fats that make up your body. Because remember, sugar can be rearranged into those other macromolecules. Protein has also about four calories per gram, which is pretty amazing to think that the atoms and energy of sugar, we've already talked that these same atoms in protein are the same atoms of sugar, but the energy of protein and sugar is also about equivalent. So for every extra gram of protein that you eat that you don't use as energy, you can convert those atoms into protein. You can take in sugar and use the energy of sugar and the atoms of sugar to make the same energy, the same atoms of protein. Lipids, fats, are a slightly different story. Lipids can store energy much more efficiently. A lipid contains nine calories for every gram. They contain a lot more calories in the same space. Nine calories is a lot more than four calories. So if you eat one gram of sugar, you would not be able to make one gram of lipids. You need to get extra energy in order to build a single gram of lipids. Three grams of sugar would provide you with about 12 calories. Once you had those 12 calories released from sugar, you could capture that energy into a single gram of lipids. The atoms of sugar make the atoms of lipids, but you need two to three times as much energy that's found in sugar to make a single gram of lipids, which has nine calories. Let's do a quick math problem here. You need 2,000 calories every day. Suppose you eat 3,000 calories in sugar and protein. If all the extra calories are stored as fat, how much weight will you gain? 
So we can write that out. 2,000 calories are used, but 3,000 calories are consumed, which means 2,000 minus 3,000 is 1,000 calories are left over. If one gram of fat contains nine calories and you have 1,000 extra calories, that works out to be 1,000 times 1 ninth, that equals, type it into the calculator, 111 grams. I'm gonna do a quick conversion here. That equals 0.25 pounds. So if you eat three, th if you eat 1,000 calories more than what you use, you would gain 0.25 pounds each day. That would be the same as 1.7 pounds every week, or 7.36 pounds per month. What is that over an entire year? That's 90 pounds every year. If you were eating 1,000 extra calories every day, you would gain 90 pounds of fat every year of your life that you'd be doing that. Luckily, it's very difficult to eat an extra thousand calories every day. So anyways, let's put it into a single explanation. How do the atoms of sugar become the atoms of macromolecules, and how does the energy get used and transferred from one molecule to another? Here's my final explanation. All organisms consume matter. For example, plants take in matter and energy, to form sugar molecules. These sugar molecules have the same atoms as most other macromolecules. Sugar is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and proteins are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, with only some extra nitrogen. Various chemical reactions can reorganize sugar into more complex macromolecules. Energy is released when sugar is broken down, which can be captured to build other macromolecules. For example, Sugar releases four calories per gram, and proteins require four calories per gram to build. In order to build lipids, more than two grams of sugar must be broken down in order to capture the nine calories found in a gram of lipids. The macromolecules that make up living organisms come from both the energy and the atoms from the breakdown of sugar molecules. Further investigations are required to give a better explanation of what happens when sugar is broken down. This would be a highly proficient explanation. Specifically, the explanation uses examples to highlight each part of the explanation, talking about the atoms and the energy with both the calculations and the composition of proteins. And it also identifies weaknesses in the explanation and tells us that further investigations are required to make it even better. In this explanation, we can track the cycling of matter, the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen between various molecules, and we can track and describe how the energy from sugar is used to build up macromolecules, as well as the atoms of sugar being used to build up macromolecules. This is a highly proficient answer. So thank you for watching today, and I hope that all made sense. When you come to class, we'll be using a lot of the same information to do a lot of the similar work where you'll be writing explanations to describe how macromolecules are formed. But for now, I will leave you with a song and I can't wait to hear the questions that you come in with.